Well, hello everyone and happy Sunday and welcome to this week's edition of My Journey with Jesus. Thank you so much for tuning in to this week's devotional video. My name is Dave Little and as you know, I'm not a pastor, I'm not a professional speaker, I'm just a guy living in Madison, Wisconsin and walking imperfectly with Jesus, but God has put it on my heart from week to week to use my YouTube channel to talk about what I have learned and how I have tried to put it into practice in my life and how we can uh, learn together and walk together in growing in Him. And thank you for tuning in this week. Now, as you remember, we have been talking about faith and healing in Luke chapter 8. And today we're going to talk about COVID. And we're going to talk about that in the context of what we have examined the past couple of weeks, and also from my own perspective as a physician. Uh, there has certainly been a lot in the news about this issue, uh, COVID the disease, the science, the treatments, and, and lots and lots of politics. But just like the first 77 episodes of My Journey with Jesus, we're going to keep the Bible as the focus of today's discussion. Now, the past couple of weeks, we have looked at the ministry of Jesus as a healer and the role of faith in modern medicine in both sickness and health. And let's review some of the principles of what we have learned and kind of work backwards from what we have discussed through the topic of COVID today. Uh, so what have we learned? As Christians, we do not need to fear illness or death. We recognize that these are part of the uh, life that God has ordained for us and the results of the, the fallen nature of man. And although we do not need to fear these things, we can pray for health for ourselves and for others. And as we pray, we know that we are subject to God's sovereignty for the outcomes. Uh, our lives were ordained by God, and he has the power to act and the power to decide whether to act in any given situation, as we saw both in the episode with the, uh, the woman who had the bleeding issue, and also in the life of Apostle Paul, who had some sort of thorn in his flesh that he prayed for healing, and God chose instead to let that thorn remain with Paul in order to teach him about his need to depend on God. And from that, we have come to understand that it's not a lack of faith that prevents us from getting better. Uh, it is God's sovereignty and God acting in our lives in ways that are according to his chosen purpose that determine these outcomes. Uh, finally, we have come to understand that our sufferings, whatever form they take, are temporary, and God is eternal. So, how do these truths apply to COVID? Uh, COVID and society's response to COVID have been such a hot topic these days. We have beliefs and practices that are all over the map. Some folks think we ought to go into complete quarantine mode. Uh, some folks dispute the very existence of the disease, and there are all kinds of opinions between those extremes about vaccines and treatments and masking and social distancing and the role of government and individual freedom in, in making all of those decisions. So for today's discussion, I'm going to start with my perspectives on COVID and examine these perspectives in light of the scriptures and present my personal approach to the pandemic as a Christian, as a physician, and as a citizen. So, here is the deal on COVID. COVID's a thing. We don't know why it's a thing. Um, we do know that we have public health authorities who are responsible for managing COVID, and our public health authorities don't know everything but they're the best we've got. The best available resources in, in science and technology are serving the, the public in the role of uh, public health authorities. 
They're imperfect, but they're the best we've got. As Christians, we are subject to our governing authorities, except in cases where they clearly violate God's word. But I would submit that there is nothing about vaccines or masking or social distancing that violates the word of God. And we will uh, dive into that in some detail. So, about COVID. Why is COVID a thing? Well, COVID is a thing because we live in a fallen and broken world. Uh, we suffer from disease. We suffer from illness. We die as a result of the power of sin in humanity and the power of sin in our own lives. The Bible describes illnesses and plagues as natural occurrences over the course of history. Uh, this week I found a really cool blog post that describes a variety of plagues that occurred throughout the Bible. And I will post this link to this blog in the description of the video down below. In the Old Testament, plagues are sometimes described as a mechanism for God to administer justice to sinful nations. Uh, in the New Testament, uh, God does not deal with nations as collective um, identities the way that he did in the Old Testament. But in the time of Jesus, Jesus ran across a lot of people who suffered from illnesses and various types of plagues, and he healed many of these people for the purposes of proclaiming his power. But he didn't teach that illness was always a form of judgment. In fact, we see an episode in John chapter 9 where Jesus encounters a man who was born blind from birth, and his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he would be born blind. And Jesus answered, It was neither that this man sinned nor his parents, but it was so that the works of God might be displayed in him. Uh, so not all illness or debility is the direct response to sin, either in the lives of the individual or the family or the nation. Uh, also in Matthew 24, Jesus prophesied that illnesses and plagues would occur in the future as part of the sufferings of the earth in preparation for his return. These are not specifically signs of the end of the world, as Jesus makes it clear, but he describes these as the beginning of birth pangs. The whole creation groans and suffers the pains of childbirth, just as Paul reiterated in the book of Romans. So none of us should be surprised or shocked that this pandemic is happening. The question is, how should we as a society respond? And that brings me to my next point. Our public health authorities don't know everything, but they are the best resource that we have available to help us work through this pandemic as a society. I'm going to draw an arbitrary distinction here between authorities and experts for purposes of this discussion. An expert is someone who knows everything there is to know through extensive study and experience. Uh, when I use the term authority, um, that's, that's a little bit lower on the, uh, on the scale of esteem. An authority in, in my vernacular is someone who knows more than most people but may or may not be an expert per se. And you can quibble over this terminology, expert versus authority, but, but bear with me as I, as I lay out the logic. Uh, last week, I talked about my sprained ankle and how I was treated by doctors and therapists who were able to manage my condition and bring me back to full strength with a variety of techniques. The doctors and the therapists who treated my ankle were experts because they had treated hundreds, if not thousands, of ankle sprains over the course of their careers. The COVID pandemic is a whole nother kettle of fish. The world has not seen a pandemic of this scale in any of our lifetimes. The last time anything of this magnitude went down was back in 1918. 
There have been a few significant disease outbreaks over the years, maybe H1N1 back in 2009. But before that, you have to go all the way back to the early 70s. We don't have anybody in medicine today that has managed hundreds of pandemics like we do ankle sprains. Most of what we know about pandemics we learn from reading history books, not from practice and, and repeated empiric testing. So that having been said, we do have people who are experts in specific areas. People who are incredibly knowledgeable about the science of viruses as a whole, but there's a lot more to it than that when it comes to managing a pandemic. Uh, we need to understand viruses, how they behave in sick people, how they behave in laboratories, how they spread. What about vaccines? What about other treatments? Uh, when we're talking about pandemics, we also have to talk about population management and human behavior. Just because you know a lot about viruses doesn't mean that you can predict whether or not your grocery store is going to run out of toilet paper. Uh, and since the last pandemic in, in 2009, the H1N1, human behavior itself has changed, mainly because of social media and because of the excessive political polarization that we have undergone. It's a different culture now than it was then. Uh, so, so there's nobody alive anywhere on earth who has experience and expertise and the full body of knowledge of everything that it takes to manage a pandemic this day and age. And we need to understand as a culture that the people in charge are not perfect, but they are the most knowledgeable people that we have available. They're providing the best guidance that they can provide given the limitations of human wisdom. And they have responsibility to make recommendations to society and to our governing authorities who can then turn those recommendations into mandates, rules, regulations, and, and whatever form that takes in terms of how our government requires us to conduct ourselves. The best thing we can do as a society is recognize that we're all in this together and it's in everybody's best interest to take reasonable precautions to reduce the spread of the disease and to protect each other. So what advice have the pandemic authorities given us? They've given us masking, social distancing, personal hygiene. Did this work for COVID? We don't know because we don't know how COVID would have behaved if we hadn't done those things. But if we look at the data for influenza, and that's the graph I have here on the screen, if we look at how influenza has behaved in the four years prior to COVID, 2017, 2018, 2019, and then the, um, the winter of the 2019-2020 uh, the, the before the COVID pandemic kicked in, in, in early 2020, we can see that there were tens of thousands of flu cases every week that were diagnosed. And then if you look to the very right-hand side of this graph here where it says 2021, in the 2020 into 2021 flu season, we saw almost nothing. And it's my professional opinion that that is the result in large part of the masking and social distancing and personal hygiene measures that we had in place in response to COVID. Uh, so it must be good for something because it almost completely knocked out influenza this past flu season. So we got that going for us, which is nice. What about vaccines? Most of us have been taking vaccines our entire lives from baby shots to tetanus boosters to our yearly flu shots, we have plenty of data and plenty of experience supporting the use of vaccines as a public health measure. The COVID vaccines so far have been pretty good. Not 100% effective in every case, which is not surprising given the way that this virus has the ability to mutate. 
We also have some legitimate questions about the timing of the doses of vaccines and whether we recommended that those first two doses be given so closely together or, or whether they should have been uh, timed out a little further. We have questions about how effective these vaccines are in patients with weakened immune systems. But in spite of those questions, vaccines are the best available resource to reduce our individual vulnerability to COVID and to help reduce the spread of COVID throughout society. In my role in health information technology, I talk to physicians and hospitals around the country every day. In fact, just in the past two weeks, I have talked to physicians in New York, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Wisconsin, Michigan, Minnesota, South Carolina, and California. And the experiences that, uh, that they are reporting in all those places are consistent around the whole country. The hospitals are starting to fill up again and in some cases overflow with COVID patients. 95% or more of the patients hospitalized with COVID are unvaccinated. Patients who are vaccinated can still get COVID, but they don't get nearly as sick. And on top of everything else, our healthcare professionals are getting overwhelmed and frustrated. So in my mind, both as a physician and also as a 57-year-old guy who's concerned about the risk of getting COVID, vaccines are the best available resource we've got. I took two doses of Pfizer as soon as they became available to me. And if I need a booster, I'm going to go get one. I'm aware that not everyone thinks that vaccines are a good idea. And that's a personal decision and a medical decision that every individual must make for themselves in consultation with their physicians. But I've studied the Bible for over 40 years, and I do not see any biblical indication that would prevent us from receiving the vaccine. As we've talked about last week, God acts through human agency. And in this case, vaccine is the best resource that we have available to reduce our risk of COVID. And I submit that there is nothing in the Bible that would preclude us from going out and getting the COVID vaccine. Uh, people have reasons for resisting that, but those reasons are personal and political and not biblical. So, and I know I'm running long here, but uh, a few more things to, to say about this. What about mask mandates and, and shutdowns? Uh, like I mentioned above, our public health authorities are not perfect, but they are the best people that we have to lead us through this time of pandemic. And from the beginning of the pandemic, we were aware from day one that the case counts would ebb and flow, they'd go up and down, and that periods of masking and distancing would be necessary, and there might be periods where we could loosen up the restrictions, and if there's a new variant or a surge that comes about, we might need to, uh, to clamp things down for a while. From the perspective of the, of the Bible, we are instructed in Romans chapter 13, every person is to be in subjection to the governing authorities. For there is no authority except from God, and those which exist are established by God. Therefore, whoever resists authority has opposed the ordinance of God, and they who have opposed will receive condemnation upon themselves. As Christians, we are expected to obey our government, except in the instances where obedience would require a clear violation of God's word. Cases like Daniel being forbidden from praying, or Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego who were compelled to worship the king, or cases like Peter and John who were being prevented from speaking the gospel. Being asked to wear a mask in public or to sit further apart in restaurants these limitations do not rise to the level of disobeying God. There's nothing about vaccines or masking or social distancing that violates the word of God. Uh, so for me, when the public health authorities recommend that we put the mask on, I wear the mask because God instructs us to obey our governing authorities. 
I believe in cooperating with our public health advisors. I have concern over the well-being of others and not only the well-being of others in terms of spreading the disease, uh, but there are folks who are very anxious about the need to wear masks in public and we need to reassure and take care of those folks when we see them in the grocery store and, and, and they're afraid of people that aren't masked, then you know, we need to, uh, to respect that and show concern for the well-being of others by our own willingness to put the mask on to protect and reduce the likelihood of spreading the disease. I don't wear the mask to make any sort of political statement. I don't wear the mask to, to, to virtue signal or to establish my moral superiority over anybody who chooses not to wear a mask. In fact, my biggest concern from a spiritual perspective is the extent to which people have allowed this issue to become a source of contention and judgmentalism. Uh, people who choose to, to mask condemn those who choose not to mask and vice versa. As Christians, we are called upon to respond with grace, not judgment or condemnation to those who disagree with us on political issues and issues that are not clear commands of the Bible. Most importantly, I do not mask out of a sense of fear. As we have discussed the past couple of weeks, God is in control of our lives, and we do not need to live in fear about health or illness or even death. And to, to close out this discussion, and, and thank you for, for bearing with me, I look forward to experiencing the truth which God gives us in Revelation chapter 21, verse 4. He will wipe away every tear from our eyes, and there will no longer be any death. There will no longer be any mourning or crying or pain. The first things have passed away, and that is the day that, uh, that I look forward to. So I don't wear the mask out of any sense of fear. I don't wear the mask out of any uh, sense of dread of illness or death, because those things will be a part of life at some point along the way, as we've talked about the past couple of weeks. Certainly, it's reasonable to wear the mask for our own protection and the protection of others. Uh, for the same reason, I, I don't drive drunk and I don't, um, you know, smoke cigarettes and, and you know, do other things that, that potentially could put my health at risk are the reasons that I mask because God gives us the responsibility to take care of our bodies. And that's where we'll uh, we'll shut things down for, for this week. Thank you so much for tuning in this week. I know it's been a long discussion, but this is a hot topic uh, personally, politically, morally, spiritually, biblically. And, you know, it's, it's the dominant topic in society today. And I did want to take a week in my journey with Jesus to uh, to talk about that. Next week, we will move back into Luke chapter 9, and I'll look forward to uh, seeing you back next week. Until then, thank you for listening. Please feel free to leave your questions and comments in the comments section below. If you liked this video, uh, give it a like down below, and that will promote this video in the uh, YouTube search algorithms of other users who might have a desire to, uh, to see videos like this. If you want to hear more from the channel, you can hit the subscribe key down below and you'll get notified whenever new content is posted to the channel. Uh, once again, thank you so much for joining the discussion today. God bless you all and go in peace.